After traveling through the Northeast for the last four months, I have finally made it to the coast of Maine. So we just got to the coast of Maine last night. I met up with my friend Tiffany, who is also a healthcare traveler. And here is where we slept. Long Sands Beach is a popular surfing spot with camper vans all over the place. They allow free overnight parking, so it was the perfect halfway point for us to stop and get some rest for the night. Today we're gonna head up the coast of Maine until we get to Bar Harbor where we will be staying for the next few days and we're gonna go explore Acadia National Park. Welcome back. I'm making us coffee. Yay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to our Acadia trip. Yay. <laughs> We decided to get a hotel for several reasons. We knew we would be doing a lot of hiking and a hotel would allow us to take frequent showers. Plus this gave Rue a comfortable place to relax if we decided to do any activities that weren't dog friendly. Once we got to town, we went to the annex by Side Street Cafe to recharge and plan for the next day. Our first day in Acadia, we decided to hike the Great Head Trail in the morning since we had plans to go rock climbing in the afternoon. I was super excited to learn that there's a lot of dog-friendly hiking trails in Acadia, which is unusual for a national park. This trail is only a couple miles with under 300 feet of elevation gain. So I thought it was very easy, but there are some rock scrambles that could be considered challenging for some. This hike takes you along the coast on a little peninsula, which would offer insanely beautiful ocean views on a clear day, but unfortunately, this was our view. It was still a super fun hike and we made the most of it. Being in Acadia reminded me of the microclimates in San Francisco, where it's super sunny in one area, you turn the corner and you're in a dense cloud of fog. After hiking along the coast, it brings you to Sand Beach where the clouds started clearing up. We stopped for a snack on the beach and soaked in the gorgeous views before making our way back to the car. Later that day, we went climbing at Otter Cliffs with our friends from Acadia Mountain Guides. This was Tiffany's first time ever rock climbing and she killed it. Acadia Mountain Guides offers guiding and instruction on many outdoor sports in Maine, New Hampshire, and locations all over the globe. We decided to stick to top rope since it was Tiffany's first climb. Our guide set up some anchors that overlooked the ocean and he repelled us down the cliffs. You got it, three. Tiffany. That's, That's okay. That's how you tell people how strong it is. <laughs> nice. See you down there. The weather was absolutely perfect, and it's safe to say this is the prettiest location I have ever climbed.
Phil instructed Tiffany how to tie in as a climber and belay me, so we switched off until our time was up. We only booked a half day and climbed four routes in total. The type of rock we were climbing is pink granite, which literally appears pink and is one of the things that Acadia's coastline is known for. I had an absolute blast and I'm so glad I got to share this experience with Tiffany. The next morning, we got up early and drove to the summit of Cadillac Mountain for sunrise. It's important to note that driving on this road requires a reservation on recreation.gov. Sunrise reservations are released two days prior and get snatched up within minutes of being released. After enjoying a magical sunrise on the summit of Cadillac Mountain, we made our way down to Jordan Pond for an early morning hike. We even got to watch another sunrise, making this hike far more breathtaking than it would have been midday. This trail is about three miles and it's extremely flat except for one short section of rocks. This is one of the many dog-friendly trails in the park, so Rue got to enjoy it with us as well. I'm very glad we went early and there were barely any other people. Since most of this trail involves walking along planks of wood, it would not have been fun constantly stepping aside for people coming in the opposite direction. You can also choose to hike up to the bubbles from this trail, which would offer an incredible view overlooking Jordan Pond, but we skipped that one because it's not dog friendly. Another popular attraction you can access from this trail is the Pond House. We went to try their famous popovers, but unfortunately it was closed for a private event. After a quick power nap at the hotel, we hopped aboard a nature cruise with Bar Harbor Whale Watching Company. They take you all around the island and teach you about the history of Acadia. It offers beautiful views with a totally different perspective on the island, including where we went climbing. This cruise was the perfect activity for Tiffany and I to relax and recharge while still experiencing the beauty of the park. They also point out any native wildlife along the cruise, 
We got to see a couple bald eagles, but we just missed Atlantic puffin season, which is from late April through August. I did see some porpoises towards the end of the cruise, but they were way too quick for me to catch on camera. We hopped off the boat and decided to do some shopping around Bar Harbor. This is a very popular cruise port and becomes densely populated with tourists. So we were lucky there was only one cruise ship in that day. Tiffany and I spontaneously decided to head to Disconnected Tattoo in Ellsworth, which is about 30 minutes north of Bar Harbor. We got semi-matching tattoos to remember our time together in this special place. See, you did the spicy rock, now you're having a spicy tattoo. <laughs> Here's how Tiffany's turned out, but I forgot to get a photo of mine before it was covered, so stay tuned for my next hike to see how it turned out. The next morning, Tiffany left early to get back to work at Mass Gen, and I decided to squeeze in one more hike before checkout at 11. On my way, I witnessed a jaw-dropping sunrise over the Atlantic. I heard awesome things about the Beehive Trail and couldn't leave the island without hiking it. It's understandably not dog friendly, so Rue happily sat this one out in her comfy bed at the hotel. It's only one and a half miles with 500 feet of elevation gain, so I was able to knock it out pretty quick. It's supposed to offer some of the best views in the park, but per usual, the weather was not on my side. The sun shining through the dense fog was actually pretty magical and I felt immensely grateful regardless of the blocked view. I thoroughly enjoyed this trail and loved hiking along the narrow ledges, steep drop-offs, and climbing up the bars. The hike down was much easier, alternating between stairs and flat paths. I could see the leaves starting to change a little bit, but it was far too early to see the fall colors in this area. If that's what you're looking for, I would wait until October to visit. I soaked in the peacefulness of this last path I'd be hiking on the island, and in case you're wondering, here's what my adorable little tattoo looks like. I love it so much. After taking one last long hot shower and checking out of the hotel, I decided to leave Bar Harbor and head north. You ready to go? Let's go, let's go, come on, let's go. There's another area of Acadia National Park called Skudik. It's about an hour drive and I was able to secure a campsite right within the park. 
We made it! <laughs> I decided to check out the campground first. Normally, I don't like the lack of privacy I experience at campgrounds, but this campsite offered total privacy. I put down my bug screens by the bug wall, charged my batteries, and relaxed for a little bit. Being my antsy self, that didn't last long and I decided to go check out the coast. Some areas were very foggy and some were sunny. I decided to park by Blueberry Hill, which offered much more visibility than Skudik Point. Rue and I explored the area and ultimately relaxed by the water for a couple hours to soak in the mystical views. After driving along Scudic Loop Road, we made our way back to the campsite, I cooked some dinner, and called it a night. Here's where my Acadia trip must come to an end. It was time for me to head back to reality and continue my current healthcare contract in New York. I decided to visit the coast one last time to eat breakfast by the ocean before my long drive. Visiting this park has always been at the top of my Northeast bucket list. I truly had a wonderful time and am so thankful for the quality time I got to spend with a dear friend experiencing such a beautiful place. I've been living in my van for five months now and I don't take any of this for granted. We still have so many more beautiful areas to visit, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay tuned for our next adventure. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.